Good day. My name is Diane Cooper. I'm the service hydrologist with the National Weather Service in the Twin Cities, Minnesota office. And today we're going to talk about concrete frost and how that might play a role in the spring 2013 thaw. So we're going to first take a closer look at some of the locations of concern. Why does concrete frost exist in Minnesota and parts of Wisconsin? And then how does frost depth play um, into the conversation of concrete frost? So we're going to zoom in and take a look at what are the likely areas that we think concrete frost exists. You can see the areas that are um, outlined in yellow across parts of south central and southeastern Minnesota, northern Iowa, and uh, parts of west central Wisconsin and in too much of southern Wisconsin. So those are the areas that we're focusing in on, but let's first take a step back and talk about why does concrete frost form and how is it really different than frost depth. Frost depth, what we look at is what is the temperature profile of the soil and where is it below freezing. So that's really what we're looking at with frost depth. We're not really looking at what is the saturation or how much moisture is in the soil. Concrete frost, however, does evaluate or analyze what is the moisture levels in our soil and where are those levels below freezing. And so what we have to have first is a saturated ground. And then we freeze that saturated ground and we get a really solid layer. The problem with concrete frost is it can't be explicitly measured or modeled and it really will impact, however, how the snow melt and rain runoff process occurs. One of the things that we're concerned about for this year is it will take less precipitation than one would expect to produce flooding as very little water is able to penetrate into the soil and most of the water will become direct runoff. Hence the name concrete frost. It acts like concrete. Once that water hits the ground, it immediately runs off. So we're going to now look at how do we identify the areas that we likely have concrete frost. Again, it can't be measured, it can't be modeled, but we can subjectively make some analysis. One of the big factors we looked at is we had a storm in mid-December that we actually had rainfall. So that rain was able to melt any snow that we had on the ground and then infiltrate into the soil, that top layer. And we're not sure how deep it is, but we suspect it is probably at least a couple of inches. So we looked at a couple of different locations where we saw that we did have rainfall and we identified where did we completely get rid of or almost get rid of our snowpack so that we know that the water was able to saturate into the ground and then the snowpack started to rebuild again when we got the cold air in place. So these are the locations that we looked at and you can see I've highlighted in the green the areas that we did have at rainfall and it's really hard to see in this graph but you can see that there is a green line which shows that we had a freezing rain um, or rainfall event. And so that's what we're looking at um, is, is for those areas that we did see that rainfall. So I have St. James on the list. We looked at Waseca, same thing there. We looked at Austin, same thing there. Pretty good rain event actually in Austin in mid-December. And then we finally, as we moved farther east, we looked at Marshfield, Wisconsin. So that's how we identified those northern uh, ring or areas of where we suspect we have our concrete frost. It probably does exist farther north, but we don't think it's quite as solid as the areas um, that we have were, were farther south. So now let's talk about the frost depths. Again, this is just looking at how deep is the soil below freezing. We see quite a range actually. Um, we have 18 inches up in Long Prairie, and that ranges uh, to 43 inches in Bloomer. Wisconsin. So we have quite a range, but most areas are looking at two to three feet of uh, frost depth. Again, frost depth does identify that fairly deep layer of frozen ground. But one thing that's kind of interesting about frost depth, and we have going on in this situation, is we have that top layer is solid frozen with a concrete frost, but underneath, even though that layer is below freezing, it's dry. So that means that it's porous and it is going to allow water to move through it before that water freezes. And that will be an interesting element as we go through the spring thaw is how will that water be able to move through? Will it refreeze as it goes through the soil column or will it actually continue to move through the soil column? So another element to, to be monitoring. So as we close out here, again, we want to focus in on those areas in yellow 
for the likely areas of concrete frost. And the important points to note is if that top layer of soil does not thaw during the melt, then most water will run off directly. And this is especially concerning if we see a rainfall event because it'll only take about one to two inches of liquid water to cause flooding problems. So those are the key things that we need to watch as we go into the spring fall this year.